Hi and welcome back to continuing decorating the envelope. So this is where I basically just um, sort out the ephemera and things that I had. So I just, that's all the small bits and pieces of ephemera that I had um, nicely put together in a little bag and then this is just the bigger pieces so I just went through it to remind myself of what I have, have to play with remember I don't really know the direction I'll take with the envelope so those are my Posca pens which were really uh, useful and then I decided oh I wanted to make a monogram of an M because the swap name of the recipient was an M so I used a mini alphabet punch, looked for the inner shape and started cutting paper down to size. So it's usually one and a half by two and a half inches. But for the M because it's a bit broader, it's two and a half by two and a half inches of paper. And then as you can see, I'm doing the cutting. This is actually really easy to do um, and I like the font that they use so I decided to do two white ends for this project just because you can do anything with the white and also I remind you the envelope is really green so that just made sense to make it and uh, I may do just in case I make a flop or if I want to shadow box it or not shadow box it but make a shadow over the one you know what I mean then I decided actually there's some off cut paper that's in the green that I like so I cut off another piece and then I just made another M by this time I already knew what to do and I didn't need the directions anymore It's a very nifty little tool that I got like a few years ago. Um, I haven't used it for quite a while, so now I'm glad that I can just use my stuff again. Okay, so the guillotine was put away and I took out my stamps. Um, I've got one that's got writing on it. So this is me just testing out different inks and ink pads to see what it's gonna look like. So I took like a dark bluish gray ink and decided to use that just randomly across the back. And then I also had a few white uh, ink thingies, <laughs> um, which I also used on random places. That print didn't come out like too bright or too clear, but seeing as it's for the background and it's just for random texture, it didn't really matter that much. I did give my stamp a good cleaning after that though, which is what's busy happening now off camera. Keep in mind, every now and then I forget that I'm out of shot and this is what's happening over here. So yeah, that's what's happening. I'm cleaning the stamp. Then I think I actually got black, yeah. So I got like pitch black and I just put it randomly on the stamp, not on the full stamp. Cause yeah, it's supposed to just be random texture. Then came the next part, figuring out what, what to do next. Cause I didn't really have an idea, but in this instance, I was just thinking of playing with some off cuts and doing some weaving now I love paper weaving weaving I just absolutely love it I don't normally go about it this way um, I normally choose a place and then I work over it but uh, this time I thought seeing as I'm going to be pasting it on the envelope anyway let's just do it kind of freehand and see where it goes so yeah it's a little bit wonkly but yeah, I played around with which colors go with where. 
So that's kind of like the finished effect. And as you can see, I quickly discarded that idea because it just didn't work for me. And then I decided, ah, let's just sketch it a little bit. So the recipient of the envelope is really into like vintage and old fashioned. Oh yeah, that's where my camera fell off. Um, so I repositioned. So this um, lady is really into vintage and old fashioned and not at all a kawaii or you know, kitty pie type of person. So I decided to draw, keep the texture um, plentiful and use like greens and golds and bronze. So this is where I brought in my Posca pen. This is the bronze one. And I did leaves. I personally like doing swirls and leaves. So for me, this was fun. I then added some green leaves with the green Posca paint again. As you can see, it's kind of like a medium nib. Keep in mind, every now and then I go off camera. Um, that's just because I forget that <laughs> the whole, everything isn't in frame. So yeah, this is where um, I go in with like a gold Posca pen, like a trio of dots, which I like to do every now and then. Sometimes I do swirls, sometimes I do dots, sometimes I do flowers. In this case, I just wanted the dots. I didn't want any flowers at all. I felt like it didn't have a place here. So that's what I basically did. And then this is like a little nifty gadget, which is like a little paint splatter tool, but I haven't used it in years, so the nozzle was clogged. And I quite honestly didn't feel like going and getting hot water and trying to declog it so I decided to try out splatters on the tissue which I actually liked um, and did that in the envelope but now as you can see I'm using that big big blob um, as a little bit of paint to color in some of the bronze leaves totally enjoying that process it also made it blob a bit less and added a little bit of, I don't know, um, just uh, filling in some of the bronze leaves. I didn't fill in the entire leaves, just like sections of it. Then I decided to take that pink pad, the greyish blue one, um, and a small brush and then just adding a little bit of shadow. So I just used it like a dry brush method and every now and then I would wet my brush with a little drop of water but that was all just like experiment as I go type of vibe. I really enjoy this. I just enjoy just yeah playing around going around the page adding shadows or texture where if I see fit. No rhyme or reason or specific method, or maybe there's a method, maybe it's my method. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I've been doing. Off camera, there I go. As promised. <laughs> um, this is me just cleaning up around the dots because I did smudge a little bit. So I just took a little bit of water and cleaned up around it. And then with that slightly wet brush I went uh, touch the ink pedal again and continued shadowing. Then around here, I think this is when I went and got my coloring pencils out. No, 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 no. This is where I got the gelatos out, which is really fun. This specific color is like an olive green, so I thought it best to use that in the bronze leaves. So I would color on the leaves. And then I would take the brush that I got with it. And then I would smudge a little bit. Um, I actually wetted the brush a little bit as well, just to move the gouache around on the page. So that was fun. It also added like a little bit of depth and dimension to the leaves. I actually think that's where my drawings came to life a little bit. I mean, it's far from perfect, but I started to like what I saw. <laughs> I think this is also where I use the, the forest green. Yeah, I use the forest green gelato for the green leaves. 
totally enjoyed that as well. Same method. Use the gelato, then go in with a brush afterwards, wet it a little bit and move the product around. That was nice. I also felt like um, I went over the lines of the Bosco, which I didn't do with the bronze, but with the green. Um, I went over the lines just to blend it a bit with the background. Because as you can see there, um, if you don't do it, it looks a little bit too alive. Bright, I don't know, but see if you cover it. I just blend it nicely, so that's what I like to do. And I did it. Okay, um, from here on, I think I went to the coloring pencils because I um, felt like it needed a little bit of a different a texture, but more of a clear line also. With the gelato brush, it's also not very specific or precise. Um, so this dark greenish pencil provided a little bit um, more of a shadow but then I also added a few more leaves. That was fun. I really enjoyed this part. This, I kind of lost myself here a little bit just throwing in more and more leaves and then just also shadowing around the leaves so that it actually stands out a little bit. Yeah, otherwise it would have just gotten lost. So, yeah, oh, I remember that was funny. <laughs> so that's me outlining it a bit more and then moving further along the page. Here we go. Yeah. While I was doing this, I was also I have the TV playing in the background, which most of the time doesn't really bother me. Sometimes um, I just listen to what's happening. So it would be, if it's something like Kate Nett or Picasso or whatever, then I will just listen to whatever's happening because I don't need to see what's happening. Um, but. I've also been watching some series sometimes, like this is definitely obviously not series time, this was just listening time. But at that point in time I think the husband was watching Bridgerton, now, I've already watched Bridgerton so I didn't need to look, but yeah that's I think what was playing in the background. I actually thoroughly enjoyed Bridgerton so much, it is in my favourite era, which is like you know Renaissance-ish. So I really enjoyed it and the protagonist male, gorgeous. Okay, so yeah, I started using a white pencil and also a yellow, which I switched out for gold pencil later, just for some accents on the leaves. Yes, I'm working off the frame again in my brilliance, but in due time, yes, which is now, you can actually see what I've been doing. So the Posca leaves, I've been just highlighting on the edges with white pencil. Once again, um, I really enjoyed this pro process. I did give some dimension and light to it. And then I used the gold pencil for those pencil leaves, just for the surface of those leaves, not the entire leaf either, just like sections and edges of the leaves. See, I got a little smart and moved the page a little bit. So yeah, that's the leaf fun that I was having over there. I, I really had a lot of fun, fun with this envelope. It started off, I didn't know I was going with it, but once I started drawing, um, nobody should stop me. So this is where I was experimenting with like this two crafts markers and trying to see what I was going to do with it. And I also never use like the, the nub. So the brush, I, the brush side I use, but not the nub side. So in this case, I started to decide to use the nub as a scratching tool. So I would color it in with the brush side and then I would use the nib side to scratch in like the texture of a leaf I would say and 
once again, therapeutic, love that your brain can just go, think of all different things, not necessarily thinking of the leaves. Oh, the nibs of this specific um, brush was so irritatingly frayed and inaccurate, but that is also part of letting go of perfection and letting go of you know, everything having to be a certain way or planned out. Um, and this is what I actually learned or relearned with this envelope process. It's just letting go and just having fun and not necessarily having a plan because most of the time I have a plan. And with this specific envelope, I started, as you could see with the previous life, without a plan and now continue this also without a plan and I'm at this stage having so much fun. So this is me just once again playing around using the white Pasca to put dots on all the Pasca leaves, so the bronze and the green leaves. Um, I dotted a little bit. I was at a stage where I was wondering if I wasn't doing too much, but no, I love it. And then I did uh, white pencil highlights on the pencil leaves this time. Otherwise, I felt like it was just disappearing. Yeah, I was so in love with it. I was like, I cannot not repeat it on the other side. Also, I need to, um, it's just a little bit of continuation. I mean, it is the same envelope and you want to keep some consistency. So I borrowed what I did on the one side and brought it to the front. Yeah, this is where my Posca ran dry and then luckily Posca is so awesome you can just tap it a little bit and then the ink starts flowing again or the paint. So yeah, this is where I try to replicate what I did at the back. I'm forgetting a few steps, but I mean, even with that, the front and the back are not exactly the same but it's actually perfectly different in the sense that um, the differences suit the sides, if that makes sense. <laughs> maybe you'll see later, maybe I'll explain later if you can see it. But anyway, so yeah, this is a quick version where I knew I started off with the bronze and the green. So I would flip it over every now and then to just refer back. By the way, those washi tape strips on the middle stuff is just to keep it in place until I paste it down again later permanently. This is where I go in with the gelatos very quickly just giving some texture. You see with the step that I skipped on this side that I did on the other side is the golden splatters. I just felt like I didn't want to do that on this side because I've already got elements on the side that I didn't want splatters on. So I also didn't cover the leaves in a little bit of gold dust, let's call it that. Then I went in with a um, forest green gelato and also uh, repeated that process on the green leaves. And very roughly went in, also making sure that I cover the lines of the, the green Posca pins and um, I just love it. <laughs> I love the way it came out seriously and it was like the funnest time. I had so much fun doing this. There we go. That's it. I think that is where the pencils come in again. So um, instead of like shading everything with a pencil like I did previously because I knew I was adding leaves I decided to do the leaves first as you could see I was grabbing the inks but I was like nah let's just wait with the inks let's just do the leaves first we must now know that the leaves are coming in so let's not outplay ourselves so I added in some green leaves again, which once again is some of my favorite parts. There is actually like a lady on Instagram that does watercolor painting and uh, coloring pencils over it. 
Ava something something Chamberlain blah 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 I can't remember her name but you I love her work I love the way she just starts water painting without rough sketches doing blobs and things and then just filling it all in with pencil I just think it's amazing okay so here I'm doing the ink shadows again and just some are using like the lid the leftovers on the lid just because to do some of the shading with a thin little brush I follow this with a clean pencil I think yeah let's just see what happens over here yeah there you go with a green pencil yeah so as I was saying um Oh, there's a little bit of focus back. Cool. Oh, that's a therapeutic. Referring back to what's in the bag, I remember that I did that thing where I cover everything with, where I cover the green leaves with this brush pen and then scratch or itch out with the point. But the difference between this side and the other side is I actually went over the green leaf edges which I didn't do on the other side because I just felt like it looks better. So I went over the green edges, um, the entire leaf, then I did the etching and then somewhere in the same session I did the white pencil highlights and doing this brush pen etching thing you have to do the leaf and immediately do the etching because otherwise the brush brush effect gets dry and then the etching doesn't work so by the way because i've i've tried to do two or three leaves and then when i go back with the etching side it doesn't work so just a little tip if you want to try that so let's just do that with the other leaves as well at the top brush pen side each side, brush pen side, each side. Do that with, I think it's like all five leaves. And then, did I not go in with a white pencil? No, I did not. Then we go and do the golden pencil, I think. But I think I swapped it out for a yellow. Yeah, there it goes. I was playing around with the yellow and the gold and I found out that the yellow is going to work a little bit better for the leaves because I did feel like, um, seeing as I didn't paint it with the gold, it didn't, I did feel like it was lacking something. So then I went over the edges with white. And then I did the little Posca dot thing with the Bosca leaves. Here we go. And the green ones and the go uh, the bronze ones. Coolness. And then that's where I go and do the pencil accents on the pencil leaves. Okay, so that is where coloring the pencil is a little bit because I forgot to do that earlier. Oh, look at what a difference that makes, eh? Look at the difference. Loving it. Loving it. Let me see, I see I skipped a few leaves, but I wonder if I'll go back to those. That's OCD, actually missed it. Anywho, now for the M's. Deciding whether that's going to be a white M with a green shadow or a green M with a white shadow. And then also deciding to actually just paste down those temporary elements that I put down, which is where the address of my recipient will go. I used to use double-sided tape on everything but I found out that some of the projects that I went back to 
Um, the ones that were washi taped just would peel off. The washi tape is definitely ugh, washi tape. Sorry, the double-sided tape is definitely does definitely not stand the test of time. So I decided to not do double-sided tape on my projects anymore, just because the stuff peels right off. So this green thing, I also had double-sided tape on the back. Uh, this is just me figuring out if I really want to put that green on. So I covered it with glue over the wash, the double-sided tape, just because I know what happens. And I didn't want to take the gamble. And then I did decide that the white will be the shadow, or the drop shadow, or whatever you want to call it. And the green will be the main thing. So there we go. Yeah, as time went by, I don't know if you noticed it, but it got darker. <laughs> and I didn't notice, so I was just, I was just getting on. This is where I went and used the gel pen. So I skipped the, the part where I put details in with the gel pen, which was so fun, but it was just getting too dark. So this is where I'm just, adding some words at the back. I, I wanted to have a right texture. I thought it would look nice. And what better than to personalize it by actually writing a real message for the swap recipient about the swap and mail art and how much I love it. Yeah, the rest is for the eyes of the recipient. Ha ha. So yeah, that's it. That basically concludes the whole thing. It was, ugh, it was just so much fun. That is what it looks like on the front. Um, and that's what it looks like at the back before the flap is closed down. And this is just a little bit of detail. What it looks like up close if you look around the page. I absolutely love it. Super, super, super happy with the result, if I have to say so myself. Sadly, I have to tape um, over everything just to keep it so it uh, arrives in good condition. <laughs>